In April, we brought you the story of a Pepin County cemetery that's undergoing a lot of work to replace some of its headstones. Today, our own Felicity Bosk visited that cemetery again as a dedication ceremony takes place for the headstone of a Civil War veteran buried there. A hundred and forty-six years ago, Moses Basil Bashaw was buried at a cemetery in Pepin County. Three years ago and five generations later, his great-nephew decided to replace the weathered headstones of Moses and other family members. And on Saturday, a ceremony took place to dedicate the new headstone and remember the Civil War veteran. We are here today to honor and forever mark the resting place of Private Moses Bashaw of Company G, 53rd New York Volunteer Infantry Regiment. Moses was born in Canada before his family moved to the United States, and at the age of 20, he joined the Grand Army of the Republic and fought in numerous battles, including the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse, one of the last of the Civil War. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. After the war, Moses moved to Arkansas, Wisconsin to live and farm. And when he died, he was buried in the town cemetery. And 146 years later, he was remembered by his descendants and the sons of Union veterans of the Civil War. And so, with bowed heads, solemn tread, and voices hushed, we meet to remind each other of our duty to remember men such as Private Bashaw, to honor the flag for which they fought, to honor the country for which they died, and to keep green the memory of their heroic sacrifice and unselfish service. All right, thanks for sharing that story, Felicity. More than two dozen people came out for the ceremony, many of which were descendants of Moses Bashaw. Staying in the valley, a police cruiser was crammed today with non-perishable food, all to help fill a food pantry in Chippewa Falls. The Ellie Phillips Career Development Outreach Center teamed up with the Chippewa Falls Police Department to collect food items for its food pantry. The outreach center located on Birch Street assists people experiencing homelessness in the county or anyone who is in need of their services. Outreach coordinator Carrie Pitsavis says they also hope this event can show people there's a population of people experiencing homelessness in the county and they need the public's help. There are people that are in need. Uh, we had people come by today saying they know what it's like to be in need, so they want to help give back to the community and brought food and cash donations that will all go back into this community. This is the first time Cram the Cruiser was held, but they hope to make this an annual event. Let's head over to the Weather Center now for a check of our first forecast. Alyssa? And McKenna, it has been a warm one. We're seeing the temperatures continue to break records. Not only did we set, see that first 90 degree day yesterday, but today's another record. 97 is that high temperature we've reached so far. The record sits at 92, so we crushed that. That was set back in 1968. Across the area, we see those temperatures sit at 93 into Ladysmith, 99 into Red Wing, even down to 96 into Black River Falls. And we're going to continue to see that those temperatures really through this evening will stay into those 90s until sunset. That's when those temperatures are going to start to drop off. And when we look overnight, we'll fall to about 72 into tomorrow morning. But we still have plenty of those 90 degree days ahead for us. So make sure that you're grabbing that extra water and that you're staying hydrated and listen to that body. But we'll de or de when we will detail more of those 90 degree days ahead for us in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Alyssa. Across the US, a Delta flight from Los Angeles to Nashville made an emergency stop in Albuquerque after passengers said a man tried to break into the cockpit. Passenger Grace Chalmers said the man rushed the pilot's cabin and started banging on the doors, but he was quickly taken down by another passenger and then the cabin crew helped as well. This passenger said the man was held to the floor for about 20 minutes until that plane could land. In that moment, you do, you freeze because it's so scary, it's so overwhelming, and you really just can't believe it's happening to you. And I think that was the biggest thing. And for those gentlemen to jump up and be like, oh, not today, sir. I mean, it was very, it was very heroic, honestly. In a statement, Delta thanked the crew and passengers who helped in detaining the unruly passenger. An airport spokeswoman says the cockpit was never breached and that passenger was taken into federal custody. And meanwhile, a 32-year-old ruling that bans assault weapons in California has been overturned by a federal judge, leaving gun control advocates up in arms. John Lawrence reports. Since 1989, assault weapons were banned in California. 
but U.S. District Judge Roger Benitez ruled it violates the Second Amendment comparing the AR-15 to the Swiss Army knife. Frankly, the wording in that ruling sounds like it's taken directly from uh, an email or a memo uh, written by the National Rifle Association. The San Diego judge's 94-page decision also says, quote, firearms deemed as assault weapons are fairly ordinary, popular, modern rifles. Now they say it's common, it's typical. No, you're full of crap, judge, and you are going to lose. I'm upset, I'm angry, and I'm also fearful for the next shooting and the one after that. California Governor Gavin Newsom criticized Benitez's ruling, tweeting it's a, quote, direct threat to public safety and innocent Californians. We can support the Second Amendment, but we can also do more for gun safety. People are going to die because of this ruling. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says House passed gun violence prevention bills must be enacted, and California Attorney General Rob Bonta says the ruling will be appealed. I'm John Lawrence reporting. CNN has reported that AR-15 style rifles were used in numerous mass shootings, including ones at an Aurora, Colorado movie theater, the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, and the school shootings in Parkland, Florida, and Sandy Hook, Connecticut. The National Rifle Association released a statement calling Judge Benitez's decision as, quote, well-reasoned and principled. In national news, the U.S. Capitol has already been through a violent insurrection, and now the Senate Sergeant at Arms says it's a different type of attack she is worried about in the future. Karen Gibson, the Senate's chief law enforcement officer, says it's actually a cyber attack on the Capitol that keeps her up at night. Her concern comes amid a recent rash of ransomware attacks across the country. I worry a lot more about cybersecurity than I do about another mob attacking the Capitol. Uh, certainly our networks are have attempted intrusions every single day. And so cybersecurity for me is a much greater concern than the prospect of thousands of people storming the West Terrace. Christopher Ray, the FBI director, compared the current cyber threat with ransomware to the terrorism threat around 9-11. Do you view it that way too? I think whether it's ransomware or other cybersecurity threats, yes. I actually, again, I, I see cybersecurity as the, my greater concern. Now, Gibson rose to the post of Senate Sergeant at Arms two months after the January Capitol riot. She was a part of a team that led a review of security at the nation's capital. Now, five months after the U.S. Capitol attacks, the FBI is still trying to track down those people involved. The Justice Department says the FBI needs help from the public to identify more than 250 additional individuals. Officials say these people are believed to have committed assaults on police officers or other violent acts on the Capitol grounds. Today does mark 150 days since the January 6th attack on the building during a joint session of Congress to affirm presidential election results. The DOJ says already 465 people have been arrested from nearly all 50 states. This comes as former President Trump's chief of staff reportedly pushed the Justice Department to investigate unproven election fraud claims. A New York Times article published today reports that during Trump's last days in office, Mark Meadows asked the DOJ to investigate